All right, let's go episode two today, chat. Um, actually, chat, I'm, I'm not going to read the chat for uh, a while because the, the video for episode two is 44 minutes long. So this video is sponsored. Guys, is there anything you need to get out of your system before we start this 44 minute Barney video? Okay, here we go. Without further ado, bug brain boomkins barney scare of lord adventures episode two apparently i've been getting word that this is the best episode of the entire barney scare of lord adventure this episode right here is the master class of a world of warcraft series playthrough is that what it's called i don't know all right let's fight this plate this plate all right here we go uh yep scare board ak40 opening event so uh, one of the more hardcore goals we have for vanilla is we want to have the most scarab lords. The most scarab lords in the world. world, world. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of farming, man. Months ago. What day is it? Wow, dreams. They happen. 2021. 2021. Well, you know what they say: another year, another video. Am I right? I feel like Sorry, I'm forever apologizing for taking so year. long to make content, but um, I play World of Warcraft Classic for the PC. I don't get to have free time. What you thought making content was my job, and I should prioritize that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, then I realized to make good WoW content, you have to go all in. <laughs> Uh, keep it in the video. <laughs> I don't care. I've lost my fucking mind at this point. Do you know how long I spend farming consumes just so I can efficiently raid log uh, to edit, right? To, I, I raid log uh, to edit, right? Wrong. To level several raiding alts so I can be as useful as possible in the Burning Crusade that we don't even know is coming out yet, by the way. You see, to secure the content of the future, I have to grind in the now. And I'm not going to get Glaives of Azanoth just by virtue of playing a rogue and being a content creator. My guild operates on a very strict merit-based system, and honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way way because it feels good to earn thing in video game crazy concept i know ironic is it not playing wait i'm doing the math i need your help chat at this point it's 2021 two years so tbc is out tbc is out when this video came out Barney hasn't uploaded in a year. He has footage from an entire year compiled and then made it into this. I am like so impressed, but also so like confused. That like, do you know how much footage that is? It's years later and it's still a banger. I like, oh my gosh. Okay. World okay. of Warcraft has become my okay. true job and making content is just what I do for fun in my free time. That's Being wild. a content creator truly is a joker's trick, uh, a monkey's poor wish. You think you want it, but you don't. Speaking of having no free time, do you know what I did on Christmas day? Killed how many bugs? It's been like, what, 16 hours? One day and four hours. This is a series he's actually trying to do. And why are you ignoring it by editing this? No one wants to hear about the. Welcome to patch 1.12. Nax is out. I got a ring in there last night. Wait, Nax is out? Nax out? Nax is out? Nax is out? Nax is out? Nax is out? Yes, Nax is out. If you got the rep to get in. Naturally, I'm exalted. My 72 runs of strat home to get Shadowcraft pants speak for themselves. Wish I could tell you that was my worst item grind, but I suffered through 206 full upper Blackrock Spire runs before I even saw a Shadowcraft chest drop. A fate that is statistically improbable, but I have the proof and, well, unlikelier things have happened. In Upper Blackrock Spire,
The sexual tension between Rend and Nefarian is awkward, and the loot you need seems to never drop. What could be worse? True. Oh, right. Blizzard introducing spell upgrade books in this patch that only drop from here. <laughs> I have to go back. Why? With this patch, we also received an array of new quests, which is just classic talk for elaborate vendoring. See, these quests aren't actually real. This is just tier piece vendoring before Blizzard figured out how to code this. However, these quests outside have something very, very important that we're going to need the Argent Dawn Tabard. Sorry, I mean Consecrated Sharpening Stones, but I am gonna pick up that Tabard too, because it's fucking biss. Consecrated yeah. Sharpening Stones give plus 100 attack power against undead for one hour, making instant poison pretty much obsolete in Naxxramas except on the Fairlina and Myxna fights, because they're not undead. By the way, rogues, on Myxna you can vanish the web spray, so go, go get that 99. Because they're so Hell strong yeah. in Naxxramas, I'm going to want a lot of these Sharpening Stones, uh, about three per week until Classic ends, so I don't know, let's call that like six months tops, that's like seven 72 stones, but then I also need to factor in I'm gonna want these stones in Burning Crusade for some bosses that we don't even know is coming out yet, by the way. I'll be it, clearing it, it those bosses spoilers. once per week every week since they come out until the end of TBC's yeah, life cycle, so uh, that's a lot of stones. But one single consecrated sharpening stone costs eight necrotic runes, and there's only one place to get necrotic runes. Everyone needs them, everyone's grinding for them, and they're only around for a limited time, because of course they are. Welcome to yet another virtual hell resource war curated and designed by Blizzard Entertainment. Well, Welcome to the grind. But it's not the grind people want to see. <laughs> the bug family's looking through 300 hours of footage. Multiple times, by the way. You gotta edit that. You gotta do it now. Yeah, no one wants to hear about Necrotic Maybe they don't want to hear about this plate, which is uh, this video sponsor. They do look good on my wall. Every couple of go. hours, a random invasion will begin somewhere on Azeroth, signified by a purple skull on the map and giant floating ziggurats appearing in the sky somewhere within that zone. If you follow one of the Necrotic Bolts fired from the ziggurat, you will uncover a horde of ghosts and ghouls protecting a Necrotic Shard. These mobs can drop single necrotic runes, but the real reason we're here to kill them is to weaken the shard. Because once you weaken the shard enough, four dudes will teleport down from the ziggurat and attempt to repair it. Using eight necrotic runes, you can curse one of these dudes and turn him into an elite shadow of doom. These dudes fucking slap, by the way. But this is what you came here for, because these elites drop a guaranteed 30 necrotic runes. Now I could have busted my balls for days, maybe even weeks, fighting against players of both factions for some necrotic runes, but when I heard my friend only got 34 necrotic runes in one day due to the sheer congestion and griefing, I had flashbacks to- Barney, you get it? That's your time. Nope, I'm fucking dead. Ha ha! Uh, something. And was like, <laughs> yeah, fuck that, there's gotta be a better way. At first, I thought that better way would be to just farm at 4.11am on a weekday. But it turns out, even if you are lucky enough to get a shard to yourself, which I cannot stress to you enough just how rare that is, you still need a group to help you. A group that is also going to need necrotic runes, and a group that is also probably going to be of a suboptimal setup because it's 4.11am on a weekday. It took us about one hour to clear this shard, and I walked away with 124 necrotic runes. That converts to only 15 sharpening stones, and it will now be three hours before another invasion starts. Oh, By then, all the dads brutal. will be awake, so uh, this is likely as good as it gets. There has to be a better way. Now, that better way wasn't death rolling this warrior for his last seven gold, which he needed to spend on repairs, but I did it anyway. No, the Damn better way buddy. was in fact something so obvious I was surprised I didn't think of it sooner. All I actually had to do was just wait. One whole month, to be exact, until Christmas Day 2020, when everyone else was off Offline spending potentially life-threatening quality time with their loved ones, Red Spawn and I came in and cleaned house. And that's how I farm oh. 200 carapace fragments. I mean, sharpening stone. Wait, what the fuck? What's wrong with my inventory? Wait, this isn't a shara. Where the fuck am I? What's going on? Oh. Ah, fuck. Ow. Ow. You alright? No, I just fell asleep. <laughs> I hit my head on my mic. <laughs> oh my god, it's only day. Oh, What's that? Next Ramus. Necrotic runes. What the fuck? The, the weirdest thing about WoW farms is. Those are the things that you remember like five years down the road, right? Like 
this past weekend, I spent the entire weekend trying to buy a FAP from the recipe vendor in org, and I actually did wake up at like 6 a.m. to log into WoW, because I'm like, no one else is going to be on this early, and there's like three other people there trying to buy the same FAP that I am, that I'm sitting there all weekend trying to get it, and my wife is like, hey, Czar, why are you, why are you, what are you doing in the, in the computer room? It's the weekend, and I'm like, I'm trying to FAP, and, and like, that's a whole nother conversation. Anyway, I finally got it, but I'm probably going to remember that years down the road. Same with Barney, so maybe these farms are a good thing. What the fuck are you talking about? We're here farming bugs. You have no idea what's going on, do you? I'm gonna catch you up to speed. After Baristolf's permanent resurrection at the hands of the No Changes team, the Horde and the Alliance began warring for the most precious resource of all, territory. After all, he who owns the territory owns the farm within it. Are you picking up what I'm putting down, son? As the hours passed and the many battles waged on, the territory balance shifted like so. Somewhere along the way, guilds of all sizes and creeds began to put aside their super serious dramas to band together under one banner for the Horde. This was, at least for now, not just a guild versus guild affair, but rather an all-out faction war, and childish infighting was going to have to be put on hold if we were going to get some farm. And so, a natural ecosystem settled in. Above ground, PvP teams would patrol to keep the Alliance out, allowing the farmers below ground to safely acquire fragments. As someone who spent quite a few hours of time doing both, I can attest to you personally that during these hours it truly felt like I was fighting alongside the Horde as a faction. It really felt like I was, like, actually a guy in the Horde. Like, the horde. Fighting in a, in a real war. <laughs> Sounds so lame, but it was so fucking cool. Yeah, I might yeah. not be very good at world PvP, but I sure as heck like to participate anyway. Just don't let me catch you alone in Stormwind. <laughs> God, I fucking wow. love being old. Ow! This system of holding mass territory as a faction had proven to be quite successful, and after a while, the large-scale fights seemed to die down. The Horde, whilst very condensely packed, had their territory in Hive Zora, and the Alliance, whilst not exactly working together as one unit, had their ter- Sorry to pause again, but, it, like, the, the fact that Barney just said, Oh my gosh, I love being a rogue, is such a cool sentence, because I think about that all the time when I'm a mage, right? Like, you have sick AoE. But Pallies probably think that all the time with, like, Bubble Hearth. And Shamans probably think that all the time with, like, Nature's Swiftness, Chain Lightning one-shots. And Priests probably think that all the time, like, topping the healing meters. And Druids might think that all the time because there are Jack of All Trades with movement speed with Cheetah Form. My point is, I think Classic is so cool. And I'm, when I say Classic, I'm, like, saying, like, Classic, TBC, maybe even Wrath. I don't know much beyond that. Like, it maybe. It's a spectrum, but mainly the old classic WoWs because every class has something that other classes don't have at all. And you feel awesome for it. You're like, I have this and no one else does. And I'm a rogue and I can do this because rogues are awesome. And I feel like we lost that. Like, we just lost that. Like, in, in more modern versions of the game, everyone has to have everything. A cloth players are tanky because... Uh, they should be tanky for some reason, and, and, and plate wares are squishier than cloth wares somehow, and everyone has a lot of mobility because... I don't know why, and everyone has AoE abilities, like Shadow Priests and Rogues can AoE, and everyone has everything. I don't think that's good. I don't think that's good at all. I think I, I like the idea of what Barney just said. I love being a rogue. Rogue has weaknesses, it has no AoE, but it has strengths, it has stealth, right? And that, that class difference of being like, look, rogues are rogues, and mages are mages, and druids are druids, and they don't all have to be the same. Sorry, rant over. Territories in Hive Ashy and Hive Regal. As a full moon rose and the evening settled in, a calm finally swept across Silithus, and for just a brief moment, there was no fighting, there was no drama, no bad vibes, it was just... Guys being dudes hanging out, killing some fucking bugs. And then he appeared. The one who would put this tenuous horde pack to the test. Cloaked in a mantle of feathers, brandishing a mallet, scorched by the sun itself, he descended from the cosmic realms. The Sage of the Six Moons. Sick. His teachings rang out in the general chat, imparting a most forbidden technique to all druids. A highly illegal Moonfire scroll wheel macro that can tag mobs on frame one. I'm pretty sure people actually got banned for using this, by the way. With really? this, the druids would have power scroll to completely disrupt the emergent ebb and flow of Hive Zora. Why be cordial with your fellow faction member and let him have that farm when he literally cannot stop you from tagging it before him? <laughs> But true balanced druids they were not, and what had taken the Horde hours to build up in mere minutes was destroyed forever.
So now we had a bunch of druids running rampant below ground, tagging literally every mob on spawn and pissing everybody off. Oh no! It also didn't help that the druids responsible for this just so happened to be in guilds who had already gained a reputation over the course of the day for farming in the hives whilst not having proper PvP representation outside, essentially freeloading. And let me tell you, when you're on your 17th consecutive hour of PvPing the Alliance to keep people safe who are in return just stomping all over your goodwill, you start to realize that the enemy might not necessarily have a red name. The enemy might actually actually just be certain guilds within your own faction, for what is an enemy if not someone going out of their way to hinder your goals. This realization came to be known as the People's Great Awakening. Countless memes on the Grubulous subreddit began circulating at this time, disparaging the rat way of life whilst praising those who had previously struck a fair balance between fighting and farming. Yeah! These memes whilst very funny, <laughs> world of rat. Rat. <laughs> Unfortunately, did very little to dissuade the druids from their path. No, you can't just steal our tags by using an instant yeah, target and class macro. Uh, uh, like... Scroll will go. <laughs> Yeah. And at this point, most people had realized the grim reality that even if the druids were to stop, it was too little too late. The damage was done. Bad yeah. blood was already boiling, reputations had begun to form, and the once proud horde pact was slowly falling apart. <laughs> I want to read oh. that. Wait, wait, what, what was all this? I, I need to see the memes real quick. And the once proud horde... ...pact okay, was yeah, slowly okay. falling apart. <laughs> Oh, it's an MMO. Things I didn't are gonna just spend happen. the last 17 hours merely everyone. PvPing yeah. and killing bugs. No, I was also sneaking around with my rogue crew, keeping tabs on everything and everyone. I mean, it's literally my job to document this event, right? So by extension, I need to know which guilds are where, their rough numbers, their PvP prowess, their allegiances, their enemies, everything. And as the battles waged on and I harvested this data in secrecy, I started to realize something. The trick to the Alliance's strength, the reason they were able to hold twice as much territory as us. It was just a numbers game. A numbers game with a huge flaw. You see, the Alliance didn't have bigger guilds or better guilds, they just had more guilds. But if these guilds no, were to better. stop distrusting Alliance each other, are, if are those better. guilds were to stop working together, well, that would be most favorable to Final Boss, a guild no other guild can possibly stand alone against. So I admit it. It was me that summoned the Sage of the Six Moons. Why did I do it? Because after years of baiting a rise out of public server admins on GTA 5 and Gary's Mod, I'm so Sort of like the deprived mind whisperer. Well, because you're a fucking low IQ nu fucking numb nuts. Talking to you is like talking to a fucking brick wall. You're in my <laughs> ear, invading my brain, and lowering my IQ. Why don't you shut the fuck up for a change and actually use your lukewarm IQ to <laughs> realize what you've done here and how you are fucking fail? And I know wow. druid players to be the most deprived Tell minds of really all. Feel. They try to heal only to be out healed by everyone else. They try to tank only to be told yeah. they're trolling and yeah, to reroll warrior. They try to melee DPS only to be told they're trolling and to re-roll warrior, and God can only help you if you're trying to play a boomkin. Re-roll warrior? Inside the mind of every druid is a complacent, beaten down, pathetic loser who only knows how to take orders. To be a druid is wow. to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. And when you're a master of none, that explains a lot about you should probably bobbing. just re-roll warrior. So, when a druid is finally offered not only a way to be useful, but a way to unquestionably become the dominant class in a scenario, I knew they simply wouldn't be able to resist. I orchestrated the great druid uprising and I did it to sow chaos. Sure, the Horde Pact was dismantled in the process, but more importantly, so was the Alliance's. And that was the plan all along. Quick fact check. The Alliance have more territory. The Alliance have more guilds. The Alliance have more numbers. The Alliance have more druids. I can only imagine the levels of griefing the Alliance were suffering through these hours. So now was the perfect time to strike, and Hive Regal, coveted for its higher drop rates, was our prime target. Okay, so they're gonna go for for a second one. That's Everyone smart. Everyone that can hear my voice is abandoning their current position, and you will move at that time. We are moving. Everybody will group <laughs> up at 3780. Is this for a regal push? Yes. I think it's wow. time we let these fucking rats drown. Leaving Hive Zora completely open to attack from the north, my guild consolidated their numbers at a secret location alongside every other true and noble guild left. We were going to hit the now weakened alliance with the full force of the rat free horde. Yeah. For the last 24 hours, Silithus had been the stage Bruh. to many large and small-scale PvP skirmishes, uh. but nothing would compare Walking to the raid slash. on Hive Regal. Let's go. This type of rare world PvP is actually pretty lit. When it's not pre-stage, when it's not like Blizzard trying to get people all in one area, when it's just like full natty bro combat.
raid on Hypergal had been a complete success. Such a success, in fact, that for the next 24 hours, nothing else of note happened. Or maybe it did. I wouldn't know. I was in this room the whole time farming oh, bugs. bugs. My only contact with the Hell outside yeah. world during these hours was through general chat, but because humans aren't designed to sit in front of a screen for 58 hours at a time killing virtual bugs for clout in a 15-year-old video game, general <laughs> chat was even more general chat than usual. The populace in their delirium were all suffering from a mass hallucination known only as Snake Min, a deity-like figure who doesn't seem to have any certain lore or single point of origin that I could place. He exists only in the delirious scrollings of those who have contracted bug brain, a condition that befalls all those who enter Silithus with the intent of farming fragments. You'll know you have bug brain when you start seeing carapace fragments where you shouldn't be seeing them. You start hearing bugs, the click I of love their the mandibles, editing, the howl of the wind as it rolls through the caves and I'm hearing bugs in real Don't life. Sleep. Yeah. Just keep farming Don't Frank. Sleep. What the fuck is a Frank? I should type in general chat. <laughs> I'm severely sleep deprived. And you see him. Snake Min. He is a reflection of you. His values are your values, and, oh. and that's comforting. Praise him. Praise Farm him. bugs. Praise, Praise him. him. Oh, Farm God. bugs. However, after deciphering several general chat messages, it seems that during these hours, Hive Zora went on to become a volatile rat kingdom with no consistent faction balance. Pretty much no man's land. If you were a small guild attempting a scarab lord or just a business person trying to sell bug killing services, Hive Zora was probably your best bet. As for Hive Ashi, well, that's Alliance territory, and that's all the data I have because I was killing bugs. In fact, we were able to farm for so long uninterrupted in Hybrigal during these hours that we fully farmed not one, but two Scarab Lords worth of reputation, wow. which looking back at it now was the peak of our farming efficiency. I don't know if it was because people hadn't burned out yet or the fact that we had uncontested free farm for 24 hours or the fact that we just had so many people, but we were harvesting fragments at an unbelievable pace. It was during these hours that I also managed to complete my personal task of gaining 200 fragments solo just to see how long hypothetically it would take for me to farm Scarab Lord myself. And so, just before I went to bed... Wait, so all of those fragments thus far, though, Barney gave away to his guild, if I'm understanding this correctly, because there's a list of priorities, and Barney's number, like, 18 on that list. So Barney just spent many, many, many days, hours, all-nighters farming, and, and Barney's still at zero? For the first time in three days, by the way. I went to hand them in. But before that... Displate. Metallic posters right. for your walls. Go. With over 1.4 million designs ranging from gaming, anime, movies, sponsor. to nature, you're bound to find something you like in a size that suits the space you have to work with. Yeah. It turns out a lot of artists I follow on Twitter have stores on Displate, which made my selection rather easy. How could I not go for Dreamwalker's incredible Warcraft Vistas oh, watch, or we'll his beautiful we'll Pastel Wave Cityscapes by Allura? Barney. Installation takes literally 20 seconds. You just stick it to the wall with magnets. It's so easy a paladin plays. I could do it. Warning, cool. browsing this website will absolutely make you want to purchase displays, so make sure you're either a content creator capable of using your clout to decorate your apartment for free, or using my discount link in the description, which if you use, will get you 30% off your first two displays, or 37% off if you get three or more. Wow! I'm currently smelting my thorium that I have been getting from rich thorium veins that I have been <laughs> sneaking from other people. Yo, Barney, fuck off. <laughs> I got prepped too. Uh, I gotta get those arcane crystals. Um, and I'm about to go to bed. Uh, I've been awake for too long. But before I go to bed, I'm gonna <laughs> hand in these 200 fragments. Probably, probably my only 200 fragments. I've actually farmed like 800 fragments, but I, I only kept like one in four. Reminder to progress past this part, I would have to hand in enough fragments to fill this bar, and then two more. Handing in these fragments will give me... 200 rep! What? That was... I'm going to bed. And go to bed, I did. Okay, so Barney did keep those 200 fragments, but that's like... Oh, dude, I... I've been playing WoW my whole life. I've been playing WoW since 2004. I've grinded 20 rank 1 titles or something. Gladiator mounts, this and that. I, I, I could never do that. There's no way I could ever, ever do that. I just, there's no way. There's it, no wherein way. Wherein I caught a delicious six hours of sleep before. More work. Now, of course, some of you might be thinking, wait, you're still farming bugs, but 
Why? Why? You've pretty much seen for yourself that Scarab Lord isn't gonna happen. Why? Why are you still torturing yourself? And to that I say, I made a promise. A promise I intend to keep. That I would live up to the mantle of the best Horde content creator and make something truly epic on this event. And do you really think that this is a good ending? Right here? Right now? I didn't think so. We still have Scarab Lords to farm. We still have quests to help with. And I'll be damned if the last three days were for nothing. I don't go back on my word. I promised you the good content and I'm gonna fucking oh deliver. Cause God. that's my ninja way. And so that's why I, after only six hours of sleep, reawoke and logged right back onto World of Warcraft. However, <laughs> this was not the Silithus I had left behind. In my absence, the largest alliance guild, Goof, whom we pushed out of Hive Regal some 30 hours ago, had reclaimed the entire West Hive in a similar fashion raid, leaving final boss with the South Hive and the surface surrounding. And as you've probably already guessed, the East Hive fell to the rats. God damn fucking rats. Goof, knowing that it would probably take the entirety of Final Boss to clear them out, had in this moment made a very clever play. We can't go and fight them because that would leave our hive open to the rats. They can't come and fight us because that would leave their hive open to the rats. Ah, so we have a stalemate, right? <laughs> Yeah. No. Unfortunately, all the people with PvP sense were at this time asleep, and so those that were left decided, fuck it, let's just fight anyway. Remember how I said both hives would be left open to the rats if this occurred? Well, that's exactly what fucking happened. Oh. Wow, I can't believe it. Luckily, some strategic masterminds were able to log in before me and negotiate a ceasefire, and I guess part of that ceasefire agreement was that our best PvP rogue Kim Possible would be taken hostage by the enemy? This is Ooh. literally what I logged in to see. Roleplay? From the two sweatiest guilds on the server? Take huh? This is how you know bug brain is a real thing. Hours passed and it was clear that the easy free farming of yore was over. The war between Goof and Final Boss had definitely been a huge blunder for both sides. Alas, this was the new reality. A reality of slow farm and rats. So many Hell, rats, so many elite. bugs, so many rats. And if things couldn't get worse, I then heard that one noise no one wants to hear in World of Warcraft was an enemy uh, rogue in the cave. So now I had to worry about this fucking rat called, literally, literally called rat bag in front of me stealing my tags. And I also had to be worried about the unknown assassin who was definitely gonna jump me at low health for that easy honor kill. But then there came so many occasions over the next hour where I was definitely low enough to just be a free kill, but I didn't get killed. The scenario made no sense. The rogue was homie. still here. Yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't doing yeah, anything. This puzzle gnome. weighed heavily on my mental. So much so that I ended up losing my first tag to Ratbag in about an hour. Or did I? Oh, Your eyes do not is. deceive you. The gnome rogue ran straight through me to get to Ratbag, uh, the only person not in final boss in this cave, by the way, yeah. and uh, unalived him. And I mean, am I gonna really get involved? This is, That's this great. is a pretty good scenario for me. Yeah. But hold on a second. I know that name. That rogue Wrong is in rat. goof. What the fuck is going on? On. So here's what the fuck was going on. The reason Goof wanted to take Kim Possible, the best PvP rogue we have to offer hostage, was because they could then put Kim Possible to work in their hives, killing their rats. I love this game. And Kim had done such a fucking good job, as is to be expected, that they felt obligated to return the favor by sending rogues into our hives to clear out our rats. Oh gosh, but now that I knew what was going on, so I wasn't going levels. to let Kim have all the fun. I tailed Romrek back to the deepest recesses of the Goof hive and scanned for any target not wearing the Goof Troop guild tag. Rat located. I then waited for them to do rat stuff where I intervened and did rogue stuff. And of course, Goof let me kill them with no retaliation. So I did what I do best oh and kept gosh, them till they logged amazing. off. The Rat Exterminator Exchange Program had formed. I and others would periodically cruise through Goof Hive to make sure it was nice and goof and unalive any non-goofers that were found. And on the flip side, whenever it was obvious a rat was overstaying their welcome in the final boss hive, I would walk into the Goof Hive and beckon someone to come my way. They would then follow me back to the final boss hive and camp every rat until they either spirit revived or in the case of this warlock wow. Frywood logged off. I do have to give Frywood props though, out of every rat across this entire event, they were the most persistent and the most annoying to deal with. They had me on ignore since the moment they showed up here, and they griefed my tags for like a week straight. Almost like they were trying to get in the video or something, so fuck you, I'm not showing any of it. <laughs> As the days flew by and we ticked off more and more Scarab wow, Lords, it seems we had finally created the perfect farming ecosystem. We had the South Hive, Goof had the West Hive, we shared the surface, and rats were heavily deterred from disrupting this, knowing exactly who 
would be waiting on the other end to camp them. And in hindsight, it seemed so obvious. We should have just been doing this from the start. After all, Final Boss and Goof have the same goal. We both just want to get as many Scarab Lords as possible. True. And we're both the largest, most tryhard guilds of our respective factions. This, True. Th this only just makes sense. But this allegiance would never have formed if not for a stupid bit of roleplay at like 4am. And this is why I will never not play on roleplay servers. This just wouldn't have happened. A silly RP little roleplay um, wherein they lie. took our best PvP a hostage, started events that would soon turn into the greatest farming efficiency module we had had since we controlled all of Regal. Sure, we weren't farming as many fragments per hour, but they were safe, easy, rat-free fragments farmed alongside gamers who were striving for the same goal as you. Absurd numbers of Scarab Lords. What we lost in fragments per hour, we made up in morale and team spirit. And honestly, I really believe that if it wasn't for Goof, people in Final Boss probably would have burned out way sooner. But of course, Hive Regal is a secluded corner of Silithus. What happens in Hive Regal stays in Hive Regal. And so for those looking in, they didn't see the events that led up to this allegiance. They didn't see the war. They didn't see the roleplay. They didn't see this collaborative effort as something to praise. All they saw was collusion. Cross-faction collusion evidence collection thread. The rats were pissed. Hello all. <laughs> the past few days I've been collecting and editing down evidence to send to Blizzard regarding yeah, this recent collusion. final boss slash mastermind <laughs> slash goof troop collusion. Now with Obsidian Council it looks like. Feel free to add any evidence to the collection. I'm still going through video and wow. I reckon the more evidence slash emails wow, the better. Really? This just ends up making the game worse so hopefully we can do something to push back against it. And Attached to the thread was just a bunch of clips slash screenshots of random rats just getting owned and being surprised they couldn't walk in as a solo player and just free farm in Hive Regal. Suffice to say, oh we my. didn't get banned, shockingly, but it just goes to show how badly Bug Brain was affecting some players. For them, it was wow. tough to see that the fact of the matter was Final Boss and Goof had just realized fighting each other at this point was a waste of time, and the best course of True. action to achieve the goal of farming as many Scarab Lords as possible was to just keep each other happy. This was a destined fate, it could have gone no other way, and the proof of this is is that this horde sorry to pause the video what's this add-on total rp3 it's like a role-playing add-on with different like costumes or something or is this like a oh, world buffs maybe Oh, it's a straight up role playing add on. Okay, yeah, it doesn't. Okay. Lord X Alliance Large Guild team up was being mirrored across plenty of that. other servers. More importantly, however, this was also being mirrored in the fucking lore taking place in this event right now. The Horde and the Alliance are canonically teaming up to storm and Courage. D did you miss that? This is peak World of Warcraft. But as the bug brain virus spread, the collusion statements began to increase in ridiculousness. For example, collusion on an RP server should be grounds for immediate removal. <laughs> They're, they're which is just, playing. bro, you're playing on an RP server. How do you think this occurs, if not for collusion between factions? LOL. Was me Lol. not killing Kumin collusion? Hi, welcome to Did You Know, Idiot. The Horde and the Alliance learning to put aside their differences to work together for a common goal has only been like the main plot point for like it's every single fucking WoW expansion since, I don't know, like Warcraft even existed. Only together. United against the shadow. <laughs> will you be able to save this world we have from to the work flame? Together. You and I stood side by side on the slopes of Mount Haijan. That world tree did not fall because the Horde and the Alliance worked together. Yeah. Cross-faction collusion. <laughs> Consider yourself reported, <laughs> so you good. dirty colluders. Now I am cherry picking. Uh, it is worth noting that these rats were definitely in the minority of people, but they were a very fucking loud minority. So loud, in fact, that sitting President Donald Trump was forced to make a statement to combat the fake news regarding the collusion. Someone commissioned this and put it in my guild discord. I had to use it. This is for the <laughs> WoW <laughs> Classic server. Grabulous. Okay. Grabulous, okay. okay? You need to know that the Goof Troop, Goof Troop, Goof Troop, did not collude with the final boss. There was zero collusion. <laughs> they are innocent, okay? What Everything are we being said is fake news, fake yeah, news. They're All fine, they're fine. Drop. Did you hear that? <laughs> charges Did you hear dropped. that? With a full pardon from the President of the United States, Goof and Final Boss continued to work together towards securing Grobulus's legacy. Together, we were going to farm as many Scarab Lords as possible before the gates would open. But time was running out. As guilds began finishing up their bug farming and moving on to the next part of this cursed quest, Don't ruin his moment, you idiot! <laughs> they would naturally turn their focus towards completing the war effort. After all, they want to go and open Ankaraj and raid it. It's like the whole point of this event. At this point, in the 
timeline, it's August 8th, 2020, a very special date. There is currently only one scepter bearer, Typo, but that's all about to change. For if I were to jump forward one day, four other people obtained their scepters overnight. I was wow. there, and it was quite something, but we'll get to that later. Because that's not why August 8th was special, no. For that, we need to turn our attention to the war effort data between August 8th and August 9th. Jeez. August 8th and August 9th. Did you see it? That's an awful lot of peace bloom handed in on the Horde side, don't you think? 25,380 peace bloom to be exact. Well, that's because August 8th was a very special day. The day of the peace bloom DKP. Dawnbreaker Peace Bloom DKP. Dawnbreaker invites all Grobulans to its first Molten Core PDKP. Buy gear with Peace Bloom. Wow. Wow. Time. Discord. See you soon, Farm Peace Bloom. Thanks, Heavy Hoof. I will. And no I did, way. because this post was made like a week before now, and when you're sitting in a cave what? farming bugs for days on end, there's a lot of downtime. A lot of downtime to alt tab onto your secret <laughs> alt no one knows about and pick Peace Bloom completely anonymously in Duratar. That's a lot of peace. Bloom. But the real flowers were the friends I made along the way. Now, you might be wondering, wait, don't you want to prevent the war effort from being completed? After all, once it completes, there are only five days until the gates open, and then you can't farm Scarab Lords anymore. And yes, you are right, but the numbers. Peace Bloom is pretty damn easy to come by, so you know those bids are going to get absolutely fucking crazy. crazy. Whoa. Oh my god. Crazy. Oh my god. And if it's one thing gamers like seeing, it's big fucking numbers. And when else am I going to get the chance to see someone buy a mage blade with flowers? I have no choice but to go. However, don't get the wrong idea, I'm not going to be bidding on any items myself. Corehound Tooth? Perdition's Blade? Uh, no thanks. I'm good with my incredibly suboptimal double gut gore ripper. Yes, I have distracting dagger in the bank, and no, I'm not going to use it, because even with this handicap, I'm literally a worldwide all-star and you're yeah. all fucking cringe. But wait, then why are you farming Peace Bloom for the Peace Bloom DKP if you're not gonna bid on items with your Peace Bloom and the Peace Bloom DKP? Come on guys, you know the answer to that. Chaos. After this Molten Core, I'm gonna run through the logs and check to see who are the absolute worst players. And then I'm gonna give them all my fucking Peace Bloom. I think the true spirit of the war effort is to give everything you have for a greater cause. And what could be a greater cause than gearing up some guy who's gonna quit before Nax Ramos? <laughs> now that's content. Welcome to Molten Core. Hope you like the uh, entrance, by the way. <laughs> now, as explained last episode, a GDKP is a raid wherein the loot is bid on with gold at the end, and then everyone right. receives an even split of that gold. With these base rules in mind, and knowing that the objective of this raid is to get as much Peace Bloom as possible for the war effort, one can reasonably assume that there is going to be no Peace Bloom cut at the end of this raid, since it's all going to be handed in. However, there was one more slight quirk to this GDKP that, in hindsight, I can't help but feel should have been on the advertisement. Instead, this quirk was nestled deep inside a Discord chat that most people had only just now started gaining access to. Now, because of the events you're about to see, I no longer have access to the Discord, so you're gonna have to put Did up with my MS Paint Discord, recreation. Bro? Within this room, in this Discord, was a list of every piece of Molten Core gear. Each piece of gear had a number assigned to it, and that number indicated the, the flat price. Like a base price for bidding, right? Yeah. <laughs> If you wanted gear from this GDKP, you would first pay that flat price, and then you would, wait for it, slash roll on the gear along with everyone else who wants to buy a roll? Does this sound like a GDKP to you? No? Wait, what? what the hell is this? Why would they call it a GDKP if you can't even bid on gear? This actually is just a Wait, free roll what? pug they with extra stimmers. steps, and there's a reason free roll pugs don't exist anymore, and that's because they are shit. But there oh, you have it. No. I had joined the world's first GDKP with no bidding allowed. It was clear many people were expecting this GDKP to be run, for use of a better word, properly. Am I reading this uh, item sheet correctly? There's no bidding? <laughs> I thought this was a DKP. So so someone was gonna have to speak to the manager. Oh, Once we had zoned on. into the instance and we were all inside the same voice chat, I decided that someone was going to have to be me. If this is to get, like, the maximum amount of peace bloom as possible for the war effort, how come we're not bidding? Surely it would make more sense to let people just bid? Because that's what, like a DKP yeah. is. My argument? Irrefutable. Yeah. My social capital? Extensive. My intellect? <laughs> Unmatched. The facts and logic were aligned for a perfect KO. But the response I got might surprise you. Or it might not. I think we all know how this one ends. If there are peace bloom in the end, you can still turn that in. 
Yeah, you're not planning on turning it in anyway? Uh, no, I wasn't. I don't think most people here were planning on doing that. I think most people were here to buy gear with Peace Bloom and then just auction house what they didn't use. I think expecting fresh level oh. 60 casuals to care about your war effort above their own gold income is fucking insane. Especially when, let's just keep it real, most of these players are not going to clear AQ40. In fact, I think Bunch it's a safe noobs. bet to say that 50% of these players will probably never even walk into the instance portal. But as for me, my Peace Bloom, I would rather just delete it. And that's what I told them. Yeah, you're not planning on turning it in anyway? Delete that <laughs> shit, fuck the horse. <laughs> yeah, I would I would sooner delete it than not fuck get the anything in return. You, man. With the Game Awards in full effect, it seemed I had upset Just the host with my lions. humble suggestion to run this DKP properly, and the host had evidently not caught on yet to the fact that a lot of people in this raid were feeling pretty pissed off and misled. I recognized some of these names in the raid, I had seen them on my farming alt. They had spent days picking Peace Bloom alongside me, or against me, I guess. So I knew they definitely had at least as much as me. Naturally, they didn't want to let their farm be for nothing and so they started bargaining what if you pay double can you get an additional roll that's a good idea. And that was a good idea. If people could pay double their roll fee each time they wanted to re-roll, things would at least be more interesting. It still wouldn't be a DKP, but at least it wouldn't be whatever this is. And it wouldn't fuck over the poor noobs who have spent seven days picking flowers. For God's sake, won't someone think of the noobs? With too many people asking too many questions, Heavy Hoof was out of options. He was- Why are World of Warcraft loot rolls always so much, like, Dr so much drama like every time it's just drama filled like every damn time every guild every like it it doesn't actually like okay every time was man. about to explain why there was no bidding why any idea that involved Dragos, acquiring you know more peace bloom would man. be thrown out immediately and that reason was i didn't really want to deal with the logistics of having to deal with bits that go up to the ten thousands <laughs> fuck yeah, isn't that like the point? Was I wrong? I don't yeah, think so. Yeah, but I do see where Heavy Hoof was coming from. I wouldn't want to deal with the logistics of trading several thousand Peace Bloom either. But that's why I'm not running a fucking Peace Bloom DKP. Am I, am I making sense here? Or I don't host I Super Bowl parties either. Sense, Wanna yeah. know why? Because I don't like football. Also, I don't own a fucking TV. So don't you think it would be a bit shit of me to- I'm not the only one that doesn't own a TV, man! Hell yeah! Everyone's making fun of me for no TV. Barney doesn't have a TV either. I have a computer monitor, that's all I need. That's all I need, boys. I got a computer monitor. What else do I need a television for? I can to then host well. one anyway, and then when people show up to my Super Bowl party and start asking where the game is, I turn around and say, Super Bowl party? This is a superb owl party. You read my invitation wrong. And then when no one buys that, I come clean and say, okay guys, I know there's no TV, but think about this from my perspective, okay? I don't want to deal with the logistics of having to get a television. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, but sure you can agree that it's misleading to say this is a DKP when you're missing the entire point of the DKP, right? Yeah, I don't want to discuss this right now. No, the point was to get people to fucking farm Peace Bloom yeah. and then turn it in. So if you want to go turn it in, go turn it in. We're going to raid MC and then have fun. So if you don't like it, get the fuck out. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. You good? No, we're Everything good, dude. Great. You're just making this shit take longer. Bro, so we're going to go ahead and do it. Right. Okay, but one more question. Do you guys think Heavy Hoof is acting sus? Oh, oh, he's going to get kicked. Barney's getting kicked. If I leave, will you answer the question? Whoa. It's a stupid okay. fucking question. <laughs> Barney's getting kicked. Think so. Perfect. Well, we did. We all do. Alright, let's pull. These vibes were no fucking kick. rancid. So terrible, Impressive. in fact, that given the choice between experiencing my first change of scenery in two weeks and farming bugs, I picked the bugs. Get me the oh, fuck out of here. Yo, Barney left. Rained. Wow. Um, Hi. I Hold on. One sec. Yo, Barney, how was the Peace Bloom GDKP, dude? Not good, you guys. Not good. The Peace Bloom DKP had been a resounding disappointment. In an alternate yeah. timeline, it was probably a really fun raid with sick loot. Alas, we are here in the timeline where the people who stayed lament to me in real time how shit the raid is. I would be lying to you if I told you that the entire situation had low-key pissed me off because my ire was far from low-key. Two weeks of farming bugs had left my mental on its last thread and this Molten Core experience had just burned it to ash. I was about to go from Barney Beekeeper to Barney Gatekeeper. Let's go. Let's go.
In October of 2019, you asked me how I make my gold, and I gave you my honest answer. <laughs> and you all laughed at me. Funny little salesman selling his funny little lucky charms. How cute, but also stupid. Oh, Role players are so, so fucking good. stupid, aren't they? Sean, Imagine some random dipshit just comes up to you and wants to trade you a white item that does nothing. <laughs> and then you tell him, I don't want it. And he's like, no, you do want it. And he just keeps fucking insisting. <laughs> yeah, I, I can only imagine how annoying that would be. This is the beekeeper fortune. Depending on who you ask, this is either blood money acquired through the peddling of useless items, or the life savings of an idiot commodifying forces above his understanding. I personally think my overexposure to dragons is to blame because more and more I find myself compulsed to hoard gold. With each month I seem to double my charm output with no end in sight, but I digress. Up until now I had remained a passive player in the war effort, but no more. I was going to use every single piece of gold I had to delay that gate from opening for as long as I possibly could. Starting, of course, with the Peace Bloom Market, which I swiftly <laughs> bought out in its entirety. Gaze in awe as I deal with the logistics of trading several thousand Peace Bloom to my bank alt. Mmm, delicious vendor trash. Yes, I could post this all back on the auction house for an easy profit, but I don't want anyone handing in anything. This isn't money to turn wow. into more money. This is money to burn. And so Jeez. I went down the war effort list, draining each each and every resource from the auction house until it was drier than my bones. One thing you should know about me by now is Savage. I don't really half ass anything. Which is why I then took a flight path straight to Gadget Sand to clean out the neutral auction house as well. As I pulled up alongside a gnome mage and made my search for linen bandages, the current hot item, I found a bunch of listings for one copper each. Oh, that's oh, good As I started to buy them, I found that someone else was buying them at the same time as me, so I instead started from the bottom and worked my way up. It was at this point that I got a whisper. Those are for the Alliance, dude! <laughs> Stop buying them! Hmm. 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 Was the gnome next to me buying these auctions from a horde player? <laughs> collusion! <laughs> Sounds like collusion to me! Yeah. I'd have to double my purchasing speeds lest our pure roleplay server fall victim to yet more game-breaking collusion. Question mark? I responded. The linen cloths you just bought for one copper a stack oh. are for the Alliance war <laughs> effort. Okay, cool. They can buy them from me for a higher price then. This of course was a lie. I obviously wasn't planning on reselling anything, but I said this because I knew it would piss him off. Fuck you! I tried to respond, but they put me on ignore. They then went and cried about it on the Grobulus Discord, stating, Shout out to Barney B from Final Boss for buying the bandages and raising the price on them. What are you complaining about? 100. To which Roxy, whom we might meet later, said, Lol, at Barney B. And tagged me. UJ, world buff fanatic, king of the colluders, and rat royalty, then responds, Yeah, don't blind sell any items. I can hook you up with some contacts. The colluding warlock then says, I was coordinating it. Oh, <laughs> oh when you voice. guys do it, it's coordinating. Oh, I coordinating. See. The ally I was selling them to was right there buying them as I posted. Barney B just <laughs> bought faster. And by faster I did. I cleaned out the neutral auction house of every single war effort material, but somehow I still wasn't sated. There was only one thing left to do. As I started on my flight to Thunder Bluff to camp the horde auction house, I also tab to my guild discord at everyone from now until the conclusion of the war effort i will be reimbursing all war effort material purchases with five percent interest please screenshot your tsm ledger purchase history and proof that you vended or deleted the items oh to receive God, payment savage. ideally i'd like people stationed at both neutral and horde auction houses 24 7 so if you have as much time as i have money to burn please do your part for our most noble goal and stop this war effort however word wow. travels fast faster That's than a wind fan. Either, it seems because when I showed up to Thunder Bluff to do my thing, I was swiftly assassinated by two rogues. Oh, it was clear I personally was not safe to show my face near any auction houses ever again, but that mattered not. I already had my little busy bees out wow. doing the beekeeper's bidding, so I could get back to Silithus to farm bugs. bugs. And then my computer crashed oh, because no. my hard drive had failed. A hard drive containing PC. every single piece of footage I recorded for this event thus far. Now inaccessible. Corrupted. All gone. My roommate and I troubleshooted for hours on end as we oh, tried no. to get the data off the hard drive, but 
nothing worked. We were left with just one option, which was to send the hard drive off for data recovery, which costs thousands of dollars and might not even yield any results. But I didn't have thousands of dollars to spend on data recovery anyway, so I was fucked. This was a one-hit kill to my morale. It F. had all been for nothing, and I wasn't just done with Scarab Lord. I was done with World of Warcraft. No. I picked up my phone and opened Discord to let my GM know I was quitting. No! But he had already messaged me first. A link to the Scarab Lord list. It had been updated. My selfless dedication to the cause had not gone unnoticed. And given that final boss runs on a merit-based system, the Scarab Lord target list had undergone some renovations. <laughs> I was now no longer it. number 18 on the list. Okay. I had been bumped up to number 17? quite a few places. To number 11. Holy shit, this might actually be doable. I glanced down at my computer, <laughs> inside of which lay a rotting, inaccessible hard drive. I may have lost everything that came before, but I can still show you how Got this finishes. Body. I plugged in a 3 terabyte external hard drive and re-downloaded World of Warcraft. Because I made a promise. Oh yeah! I, I have to say this was my favorite one yet by a mile. Oh, it's just so badass. Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe, guys. Um, out, out of all of the farms, I don't think I could ever do rank 14. And I don't think I could ever do Scarab Lord. Like, I just... I, oh, my. I, Yeah, that is just insane. That is just insane to me. Just insane. Um, guys, we're going to watch more Barney uh, tomorrow and the next day. We have two episodes left. I'm looking forward to watching them, but I do want to space it out because I don't want to just do like a five hour Barney stream. But yesterday we watched this one. Today we're watching this one. Tomorrow we're gonna watch the next one. If you guys wanna watch it without me, I will link it in the chat for you. You can uh, watch it by yourself. Spamming the YouTube link, shout out Barney64. These are amazing, man. The storytelling skills of Barney, I, I, I love it. I, I told you guys like a month ago that I haven't seen it and everyone in Twitch chat was like, what? How have you not? And I'm like, bro, who's Barney? I've never heard, I, I just haven't seen it. And everyone is freaking out. And now I understand why people were upset. This, yeah, this is great. This is great. Um, damn. All right. 